Okay. Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another standard chess video. It feels weird to say that it's been a while. So yes, this is a 15 minute game. No increment. Just picked up a game here against a 2368 rated player. Let's play a Jobaba London. I've been experimenting with this system a little bit. I've been meaning to study it in, in greater depth, but I've been having fun just playing it. I know some of the main ideas and let's see how it goes in this game. Okay, so g6, so I could definitely go for queen d2 and bishop h6, this approach. However, I think with black having played d5, the uh, preferred handling is this early knight b5. So attacking c7, forcing the move knight a6. And now I can play e3. And even though black can kick this knight back at a moment's notice, kind of the argument is that this knight actually stands somewhat poorly on a6. And let me fix the uh, webcam here. Fixing the camera just so you guys don't yell at me in the comments that the time is covered up. <laughs> Actually can fix my layout even a little bit more. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I've been streaming a fair amount on Lee Chess as well, so there's always a little bit of a difference in recording a game, like a single game that you're playing versus recording like an arena tournament, which I, I played a lot, a lot of these arenas. And um, yeah, anyway, slightly different layout. Okay, so knight c7. So black's immediately pivoting this knight back in the game. And I think I'm going to handle this somewhat strategically, like try to put this knight on e5. Again, this knight does not stand well, even though it's trying to reposition. Just thinking now if I want to go h3 or if I want to play knight f3. Let's play h3. So if, if knight h5 is played, I can always stick the bishop back on h2. So some dovetailing with a normal London system. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play knight f3. Now, if black plays bishop f5, it'll be interesting to see what I do about that bishop. I probably won't do much in the short term. I might plonk my bishop on e2, castle, knight e5. I like how this is shaping up. Okay, black castle. So I could play bishop d3 myself, trying to like beat black to the punch. However, I do kind of feel this bishop belongs on e2. So yeah, let's put it there. It just avoids a potential trade. Like, strangely, I don't necessarily want to swap my bishop for black's bishop, even if it meant black accepting the doubled pawns. I believe the engine kind of prefers that approach or doesn't mind that, inflicting that uh, nominal pawn structure damage. But from a human standpoint, I, I think the grip that black gets on e4 out of that can be worth it. So, all right, b5, interesting. So this is a glaring weakness now. It's a backward pawn. I can play knight e5 and ask my opponent how they're going to deal with that. That looks fairly effective. Let's go ahead and play it. So hit the pawn. And looks like black's going to have to play one of these moves. Queen e8 is, is leaving this knight undefended. So uh, I might have knight takes g6 or knight takes f7. Probably knight takes g6 being the more forcing move. So all in all, we're 10 moves into this game. I like what I'm working with. I think I'm somewhat better here. Maybe black will try to play knight d7 and dislodge this knight. I might even go back to the d3 square. So bishop d7. I'm thinking about a4. Uh, a4, b4, knight a2. Maybe rerouting the knight like this. This is one thing about the Jobava London, which is the whole system I'm playing here with knight c3 and bishop f4 is that this knight can stand poorly in some positions, speaking of poor pieces. So this maneuver would not at all be out of the question. I'm just thinking if it's too early to do it. I think I'm going to castle first. Let's, let's play this slow. And I would expect knight e7. I think black has to start. Okay, b4. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy to see that move because I think knight a4 and the c5 square. The c5 square is beckoning now. Knights love outpost squares like that, so let's start angling for it. Okay, now knight e7. Black's making some committal moves because, you know, even here, allowing this in looks pretty darn good for me. Um, so I'm considering that option. Again, I could think about keeping this knight. Knight b4 is a retreating move, but it hits this pawn. So I'm definitely looking at that. This looks like the most straightforward, though. Just take, take. Win a tempo. 
Uh, we can pretty reliably predict what's going to happen here. So queen c8. And then I'm thinking if I can somehow win a pawn, like queen d2, a5, a3. That looks very promising for me. Yeah, that definitely looks promising. I don't know if it's going to win a pawn immediately per se, but it's going to be tough for black to defend. I don't mind pausing here. I'm doing all right on the clock. I've got over two-thirds of my time left, so no problem. Yeah, I really feel like I should attack this pawn in some way. I don't think inducing a5 is going to matter a whole lot in terms of uh, trying to derive some benefit from that. I don't, I don't exactly see why that would help me because most likely black's going to have to de defend b4 anyways if I play this queen d2 move. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking at knight takes d7, queen takes d7, knight c5, queen c8, queen d2, and a5, a3. Maybe black can play knight a6 there. I'm getting pretty deep into the line, but knight a6, knight takes a6, bishop takes a6, but then I have bishop takes a6, and then a takes b4. A takes b4, and I'm going to take on b4 at the end. I think I probably will win a pawn out of this. Let's go for it. Yeah, because pretty much all this happens with a gain of time, forcing black to respond. And th that's a good example of pausing for a little bit and considering the consequences of a forced line. You know, take d7, knight c5, boom, hit the queen and the bishop. We know black has to play queen c8. There's no other moves that would make sense there for black. And on the move prior, of course, black has to recapture. So you look at forcing moves because they give you the, the ability to best predict the future course of the game. That's going to be obvious for many of you advanced players out there, and maybe even some of you who uh, are not so advanced, but it, it's, it's worth saying. That's the reason why we harp on forcing moves. You always want to be looking at checks, captures, major threats, especially if you can kind of predict the game out two, three, maybe even four moves or beyond. I tend to think two, two to four moves is the sweet spot for calculation. Uh, most of your calculations in a game are going to be kind of in that range. And this one's a little bit longer. Uh, so the line I was, again, looking at, so A5, already three moves into the calculation. I was thinking A3, four. Uh, if take, take, I like the pressure I get on A5. So instead, I was saying after A5, A3, what if black plays Knight a6, but then I noticed the line, um, knight takes a6, bishop takes a6, bishop takes a6, and then regardless of how black captures, let's say rook takes a6, just a takes b4, and I'm picking up a pawn there. Same color bishops on board. This bishop, by the way, often buried in these positions. That's one thing I like about these setups sometimes, is if black goes for this fianchetto against the London, uh, especially with a pawn on d5, Black doesn't have as much leverage against the center. With a pawn on d6, as a lot of players tend to play, if they go for this setup, they can go for e5. But pawn on d5, Fianchetto bishop, often not the best combo because it's going to be difficult to uh, create an e5 breakthrough. So black does play a5 as expected. Just running through some other possibilities here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to play this. I don't think it makes sense to throw this in or anything. Not going to give up my... Jobava London Bishop here. I'm also not going to take this yet. Let's go ahead and do it. A3. Feels good to be back posting a little bit, I got to say. Um, I know I've been taking various uh, longer breaks from YouTube. I am very active on Twitch. I will say I stream three, four times a week on average, I'd say at this point. A lot of streams on Lee Chess, some streams on chess.com, mostly where I play Blitz. And it's been a good time. Um, again, YouTube is a long-term project for me. I, I basically look at my YouTube channel as the best way to interact with you guys and uh, share my love for the game, really. And I hope to uh, post on it for many, many years to come. I mean, I'm already <laughs> like seven years into it at this point. And it's really a pleasure. I, I hope you guys forgive me if my channel dies down from time to time. You know, life does get in the way of chess, as they say. But I'll continue cranking out the content. You never know, I might get inspired to start doing stuff more regularly again. There was a time 
very early on in my chess uh, YouTube career where I was posting three videos a day, if you can believe it. This is going way back to 2015. I was posting three videos a day, a bullet video, a blitz video, and a standard video. And it's kind of crazy looking back on that, that I, that I did that. But, uh, you know, my, my passion for the game is as strong as ever. So expect more content in the future. Okay, so Black does play this. And now that I'm looking at this, maybe it's even better to take with the bishop. Um, yeah, because this is slightly different than the line I looked at because I was assuming Black would take or play knight a6 immediately with the pawn on b4. But here Black's doing it this way, which gives me more options. I mean, for one thing, I could just take this pawn right away with either of these moves. But I'm very tempted to take like this and maintain this excellent knight against what should be a pretty bad bishop. So take here, double the rooks. This pawn is a goner. That's not bad. The only thing is I maybe risk some opposite color bishop situations later if I do that. Like if black can ever snake their bishop back to f8 and challenge the knight. So overall, this is a really nice situation because I'm basically just deciding between good options. But I still want to make an accurate decision here. So my candidates are these two captures, uh, this capture, maybe knight takes a6, maybe even knight takes b7. Yeah, I could go for the two bishops if I wanted. Knight takes b7, queen takes b7. Even though that bishop's bad, it might be nice to have the two bishops. Um, I don't know, though. That knight could be jumping up to b4. Uh, hard to say. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good options here. These are sometimes positions I struggle with because when I'm spoiled for choice in a good position, I tend to get perfectionist. My uh, perfectionist qualities come come out, and sometimes you just got to go for uh, something that looks good, make a decision. So I'm leaning towards bishop takes a6 for sure. Yeah, that bishop's going to plant itself on b5, but you know what? I like that a lot, so I'm going to go for that. We're going to keep that knight in the action. We're spending a move on this because the rook was under attack. I know I'm not picking up this pawn immediately, but it's coming. Probably on the next move. I think even if black ends up putting the bishop here, it's not a given that it's going to be safe on that square. Like, I might play b3 and try to line up c4 after I win this pawn. So let's say bishop b5 is played right away. Rook takes a5, rook takes a5, queen takes a5. I like the domination that my knight offers there. I guess there's queen f5 I'm noticing now in that position. But still it feels... Yeah, that's probably going to happen, isn't it? It still feels um, kind of rough for black. Maybe rook takes a5 I even take with the rook. And keep the queen back because I think after this, this queen f5, I'm probably gonna have to retreat the queen anyways. So yeah, let's let's go for rook takes a5. Wasn't wasn't my first uh idea I had in mind. I did want to take with the queen there, but I noticed this a little bit late. Not like greatly scared of this move, but I can definitely see black trying that here. I wonder if going g4 makes sense against that against that though. It might. But also just play b3. Just play a patient move. Uh, rook, rook a7. I also will definitely consider. Maybe queen, f, queen f5, rook a7 hitting the pawn. Because if e5, I think g4 is going to hurt. g4 catches black kind of flat-footed because the pawn on e5 is going to be an issue. Black plays f6. Okay, so really tipping their hand here that they want to go for e5. Yeah, I don't think that's a great decision. I think rook a7 once again, looking really good here. If e5, maybe just drop this back. Um, even seems some forcing lines where I could take, take, rook takes g7, then bishop takes e5 in some cases. Completely unnecessary yet. All right, I'm going to go rook a7. We're going to ignore this bishop. I know I mentioned b3, c4, but... Given how the game has shifted a little bit, I think I'm definitely in a good spot to go after e7, and maybe this opens the door to the black king side, too. We'll see what black does. 
Doing all right on the clock. Seven minutes left, and the position has simplified a lot. I feel well within control here. Okay, E5. Again, forcing line here, but I'm not seeing anything immediate after King G8. I'd, I'd probably have great compensation there, but it's like, why, why do that? Uh, let's just go ahead and play Bishop G3. I'm not going to take yet because I don't want to make it easier for black to get the bishop out on this diagonal. I want that bishop to remain buried as long as possible. Maybe watch for queen a5. I could see my queen joining the action now. I don't think black's necessarily looking at queen f5 too closely anymore. Possible we'll still see that move, but... Yeah, I like where this is headed. Yeah, I think if queen f5, I might even be able just to play queen a5 and look for queen c7. This h3 move, always so handy that I played way back when. Let's say the game goes queen f5, queen a5, queen takes c2. I think queen c7 is good knight because black has one check on the back rank somewhere. I tuck the king into bed on h2, and black's got to pay the piper here on the seventh rank. So rook f7. All right, so going for trades. Yeah, it might be nice to keep the rook on board. Like Obviously, I wish I've played queen a5 now because I would have rook a8. Oh, this also makes way for bishop f8, doesn't it? Okay, so let's keep that in mind. I think queen a5 is probably appropriate here. Yeah, I don't see any tactics. Let's go for queen a5. I'm okay with this trade. My queen gets to the seventh rank. Everything's defended. C2 again is loose, but I don't exactly see how black's going to take advantage of that. Ooh. Yeah, and now, again, this rook a8 move is calling. Also, this is a little bit loose. So one line I see immediately, I can try rook takes f7, queen a7 check, and then just take here. And even in an opposite color bishop situation, that looks really, really good. Knight d7 also looks good there. Um, after the trade, queen a7, let's say king g8 playing knight d7. Looks awesome. So my first instinct was this, but I'm now thinking that this is even more straightforward. Because I, bl I guess Black's going to argue that after something like this and this, maybe they're holding out on uh, the f8 square. Yeah, let let's go for this one. Looks super simple. Give the check. Let's see where that king goes. Will it be g8 or f8 or maybe bishop e7? Bishop e7 doesn't help Black much, though. I just take on, on e5. Yeah, this bishop is really a spectator, isn't it? Okay, so black goes back to g8. So candidates here are take or knight d7. Knight d7 threatens a mate in two. Knight takes f6, queen h7. Uh, very likely black's going to play bishop e7 or bishop g7 against that. Maybe queen d8. Against all these moves, though, I can take on e5, though. So that's why I like it, because if I take here, take here... Maybe there's a little work to be done in the opposite color bishop ending. So that would be the argument for this move. Avoid the opposite color bishop ending. And I'm pretty much doing it free of charge, I think. So I'm going to go for that. Yeah, coordinating really well here. The plan is just to take here after black responds to this threat. Kind of got to watch c5 in some cases if this bishop tries to sneak back in the defensive picture. But I'm not seeing how that's feasible given the mate and two threat. We could still see an opposite color bishop ending here, by the way. For example, bishop g7, take e5, take e5. And then um, knight takes e5 or bishop takes e5. Knight takes e5 invites uh, an opposite color bishop ending. And that may happen. Okay. Go ahead and capture. C5 is no problem because I take here. So on this, also if black plays F5, here's another possible opposite color bishop ending. But if I get my pawn to F6, I really like the look of that. Okay, so takes. Now which way to capture? Knight takes or bishop takes? I think bishop takes would be 
generally the right option here. I'm seeing a possibility. So if this, this happens and then black plays queen f5, I think I can kind of freeze black's position with something like queen e7. And black cannot take on c2 because I have maiden 2. That looks nice. Yeah, let's do that. And I think if uh, c5 here, knight f6 should be sufficient. Give a check. Okay, so we're going to get this trade. And now in view of this, ooh, I was expecting queen f5. Okay, queen e8. Queen e8, though, I feel like this move is going to decide pretty quickly. Nasty threats there. Maybe queen f8, black can kind of grovel, but uh, yeah, the damage looks like it's being done here. Queen d4 at some point. The queen and the knight are such an effective attacking combination because they don't reproduce any of the same squares. They only complement each other. So knight g4, probably the move I'm going to play. Knight d7 would also threaten a fork here, but knight g4, pretty hard to pass up with knight f6 being the main threat. Okay, I guess knight g4, queen e6 is playable. Also play this, perhaps. Maybe I do want to leave that knight there. I can outpost the knight for sure. So knight g4, queen e6. I can't imagine black's going to survive that. Nah, yeah, knight g4 is just good here. Let's go for it. Because I'm seeing if check, if I flush the king out to f8, at minimum, I can just take this pawn. And there's really no counterplay for black to speak of. So I might just go after that. Again, this bishop still not doing much. Like it's observing some squares in my position, but that's about it. This plan of b3, c4 seems like a distant memory. Okay, queen f8, so black goes super passive, guarding both squares, probably banking on h5. I think that's about the only move that black has their eye on now. I was thinking queen d4 against that move. Uh, queen d7 also looks pretty good. Queen d7 maybe is just the most direct here. Get a little bit closer. Yeah, let's do that one. I like that. Even stops c5. But one, one aspect of this move is if I give a check here, queen f7, knight h6 is killer. And if h5, which seems pretty likely, I can either check or just play knight e5. Probably going to check. I think I'll check and then play knight e5. Okay, it goes there. But now check here. King g7 or king h8. I could also just play b3. Let's give the check first. See where the king goes. Again, this is going to lose on the spot. Mm -hmm. If I could get my queen to d4, I could win that bishop. Let's give one more check. So if king here, knight f6 is a possibility. Will black play king f7? Black might. I think mostly now I got to watch the, my, my clock. I don't want to get too much lower. The position is dead, dead winning. But um, I'd like to avoid playing like a total bullet game here <laughs> with one minute left or something. Even though I have been playing a lot of bullet. But <laughs> nice to avoid that. Yeah, the queen and the knight usually do pretty well when they're centralized as well, so... It's a nice situation. Okay, I don't exactly see how I'm going to 
win the bishop. Ah, but I have queen f4. Okay. As soon as I said that, the neurons connected here, and I saw the fork. So let's go after that. And that should be pretty much it. Uh, let's go here. Just looking for a trade. We can kind of bully black with the possibility of a trade now. Since every end game here is winning. Nice, queen f4. I'm glad I found that one. That's a nice little way to hopefully wrap this game up soon. That h6 was almost checkmate there. I'm just kind of playing a move that looks good. Even the check here is not really anything to worry about for me, fortunately. So just go after some stuff. Let's take this one with check. Could take d5. Looking for also trade opportunities. Nah, let's just take the pawn. Black takes here, queen e5. Keep it very simple. I'm not going to worry about finding a mate with a minute seven on my clock. Just go for the W here. And avoid stalemate, as usual. Let's push this. Take here. Black, if black takes the knight, we push. And this I can definitely win with this amount of time. No stalemate. Let's push again. And my opponent resigns. Okay. Thank you for the game. Yeah. So I felt pretty in control in this one. I think I played a good game. This looks pretty clean to me. I'm definitely help, uh, happy for playing that at 11 p.m. at night. I think Black played this a little too casually in the late opening, early middle game, let's say. So B5 to me looks pretty dubious. I don't like that. It's true that White often plays A4 later in these positions to uh, discourage Black from playing B5 and just gain space on the queen side in general, but I think this overreaches a little bit. Definitely B4, though. B5 I think is dubious, but B4 I think is just a flat-out mistake because after knight A4... My minor pieces are really occupying nice squares here, and pretty much all of Black's minor pieces suffer from some problems, especially these two, but even the bishop on g7. So, yeah, I think with the issue here, the knight coming in, and the relatively forced nature of this line after knight d7, a trade, knight jumping in, I think it's not an exaggeration to say that Black's losing here. It's going to be one pawn at minimum, and... What's even worse is strategically white has a great setup too. Uh, probably black can put up more resistance with, with something that's not as compromising in terms of the pawn structure here. I don't think f6 is great. Queen f5 maybe, but queen f5 looks like a little bit of a shot in the dark. If black can get an e5, somehow try to make this bishop relevant, maybe loosen my knight's grip on c5, maybe, but th this should be losing. So let's take a look. I don't have a whole lot to examine on my end, I would say. Maybe just we'll take a quick look at the theory uh, in terms of the stats. Let me just move my webcam over here for a second. Three inaccuracies, one mistake, zero blunders for me. 19 average centi pawn loss. Four, two, and one for my opponent. 37 average centi pawn loss. So again, this is the Jobava London. Super popular opening right now. Uh, one guy that comes to mind who's been playing this quite successfully at the highest level. I feel like I can say highest level. He's played so many strong players now. Is uh, Grandmaster Hans Niemann from the U.S. He's one of the main guys to follow in this line. He just put out a chessable course on it, actually, actually, that I've been meaning to check out. It looks really good. And, yeah, we can just see the breakdown here. Uh, Knight B5, not played so often, but some good players have played this, inducing the knight to come to A6. Yeah, you can play e3 or queen d2. I mentioned this approach. Um, I know when I co-authored this regular London system course with feeding master Daniel Barish, we looked at a lot of these approaches. If black fianchettos, that was our kind of recommendation. We actually recommended from devi deviating from the normal London where you put pawns on like e3, c3, uh, that sort of system because we like the attacking nature of this. So this is another variation you can go for. But I was kind of in the mood to try this knight b5 idea, and this is more of a strategic approach 
I'd say it's not going to be one where White's likely to castle queenside and all hell breaks loose. Pretty much how the game went. I'm trying to argue that this knight is a liability for black. It's it's um kind of on the wrong side of the board. Also, by playing c6, black weakens this diagonal. That must be said as well. A lot of times, like d5 and c6 approaches against the London, a bishop on f4, are not the greatest, in my opinion. There's, they're a little bit passive. This has all been played before. Yeah, a3, I'm following a game of Aronians. Let's just, uh, I like to click sometimes into these games because I like to get a real brief uh, overview of how, like, a game in a similar line. Yep, Aronian also put the bishop on e2. That's good to know that my instincts were validated there. Okay. Yep. He played on the queen side as well. This looks more like a queen's gambit or, you know, Grunfeld type position even. I wouldn't mind playing a position like this. And Aronian eventually won this game. Yeah, started making some inroads in the center and on the queen side for the most part. It looked like two bishops. This is a great position for white. Okay. So, um, black played bishop g7, knight f3, castles. Yeah, I was skeptical of this um, b5 move. Let me tell my opponent. Thanks. In case they want to check it out. Um, this seems like a very nice person. So thanks for the game, Raf Desbanes. If you wanna if you happen to be watching this and want to post in the chat or in the comment section, I, I should say, feel free to do so. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I wonder about B5. Let's look at what the engine has to say. Looks like a small edge for white. Barely an edge, though. I mean, point two, it's not much, but it's it's enough to be annoying. It's enough to kind of require. Black to play accurately here. Knight c e8. Interesting move there. Trying to route the knight to uh, the d6 square. So the journey of that knight continues. I mean, you might even argue in this whole line, maybe black should go like back to b8 after putting the knight on a6. It would waste some time. But then again, white has wasted time by playing knight b5 and then back to c3. So... Yeah, I, I just, I can't shake the feeling that B5 is a mistake. The engine, again, doesn't seem to hate it very much, but I feel like it just gives me too convenient of a hinge, of a, a hook in a lot of these positions with A4. And just the backward nature of that pawn kind of bothers me. But then again, I, I have a, like real strong strategic instincts in chess. I'm, I'm more of a strategic player, I will fully admit. So I don't like taking on weaknesses when it's unnecessary to do so. So I think I would be looking to maneuver somehow, maybe move this bishop, maybe maneuver this knight. I like that plan of this and this now that I see that what the engine recommends. That's hard to come up with over the board. If knight e6, I probably would have gone here or just back to h2 and then try to put this knight on e5 in the future. Okay, th this is interesting what the engine's suggesting here. Trying to get the pawn to c5. Yeah, if black can do that and start trying to apply some pressure here, it slightly weakens d5, but that looks much more combative. The landscape is going to change for the better for black on the queen side, especially compared to the game. So let's see if it uh, agrees about b4 coming up being maybe the real mistake for black. So I jump up, I hit the pawn. Looks correct for black to play bishop b7. Could also play bishop d7, but the bishop feels pretty passive there. Um... Maybe close to equivalent, though. They're going to be, it's going to be passive no matter where it goes. And again, if queen e8, trying to defend, that leaves this knight loose. So, yeah, that's one move I mentioned. Hitting the rook, hitting the knight, I'm going to win a pawn. So, that wouldn't be great for black either. So, bishop b7, castles. Yeah, and looks like here... Black's doing reasonably okay if they play a5 or knight d7. I was really expecting knight d7. I was kind of already thinking what I would do if black played this. Kind of like the game, seeking trades, but um, refraining from compromising the pawns in any way. Uh, I think this is totally in keeping with how black should handle uh, a structure like this with a backward pawn where my knight is attacking that pawn. Yeah, I think knight d7 is, is the way to go here. I was really playing around with this idea. Maybe maybe the engine won't like this so much, but knight d3, kind of keep an eye on this and also this. 
Not saying c5 is playable here. Interesting. Here's that c5 move again. And then if I take, aha, uh -huh, suddenly springy for counterplay of some sort. Now a5. This looks sharp. But my knights are a little bit awkward. They're subject to attack by the pawns coming up. Yeah, so I think if I were to pinpoint one moment that black can improve upon, just a single moment, it's definitely this one. Because b4, and this moment right here, b4, you can see the eval jump. And just the, the way the game plays out, knight a4 getting such convenient access here, kind of immediately neutralizes this whole knight d7 concept because of what you, you guys saw happen in the game. I think this is real tough for black now. Like engine versus engine, this might already be losing for black. Like this is a pretty healthy eval once you get up to close to plus two. That's, that's pretty much fatal in a lot of these games. Because for white, like I have really nothing to worry about here now. Uh, if black can't challenge this knight because of what happened, then it, it's rough. Looks like it likes knight e6 going after the bishop. Yeah, knight e6 might be a little more tenacious. I could definitely see that because it keeps an eye here, and I have to decide if I should just let that bishop get captured. Knowing myself, I probably would have kept this bishop, but again, this c5 move comes. Pawn sack, huh? Another pawn sack. Take knight e4, or now knight e7. Okay. Yeah, I can get on board with this. I can see how, I mean, the game is a lot more open now. And I have to worry about this. Maybe black will get a chance to do this and this at some stage. Still looks uh, dire for black, but a lot more interesting, a lot more dynamic. So, yeah, and this move was played relatively fast, too. Black had plenty of time. Um, I really think black should be spending a little more time right around here. We played the opening pretty quickly, all things considered. We're in a somewhat subtle middle game. And that's how quick just one decision with your pawns against uh, a master uh, can affect things. So knight c5. Yeah, rates a3 and queen d2 about the same here. I like queen d2. To me, this seems like the most human thing to do, attack the pawn. Yeah, and black could try bishop a6. That's a good point that the engine brings up here just immediately bothering this. At minimum, though, I can do what I mentioned. So if I just take and trade everything off here, I can bank the pawn. That's a real simple way to play it. I'm hitting this. Also, I control the b8 square, which is awesome. Because remember, it's not even that I'm picking up a pawn. These reduced, these simplified positions are often just better for white too, because black's c6 pawn remains a weakness. The c5 pawn, the square immediately in front of a backward pawn is almost always weak. It's a little tip for you guys. Again, I mentioned how if black can't get e5 in cleanly, this bishop is just inferior to the bishop on f4. It's just the way it is. So even in some scenario like that, black's suffering. a5, the computer says that's dubious, but I think that's completely understandable that black would play that move. It looks normal. Yep, and now a3. And I'm okay with trading because the target is the a5 pawn after that. Yeah, and here I mentioned this line, if black goes uh, knight a6. And once more, if we, we just go down this path, this is the th most straightforward way to play it. And then just take here, bank a pawn. Looks like the engine really likes bishop takes a6 and then rook f c1. Interesting. This looks somewhat similar to the game to me. Uh, if take here, then rook takes, and this pawn's going to drop off. Maybe rook fc1 is future preparation for b3, c4. And look at this. Even though I'm double attacking the pawn and black has a full move to try to do something about it, look at the effect of the knight on c5 and the bishop on f4. Bishop guards b8, knight guards b7. So black can't rescue that pawn. It's dead in the water. It's plus four. Plus four in an equal position. That's... um. That's the risk that you run when you make a rash strategic decision, especially like giving your opponent an easy outpost to work with, compromising your structural integrity. That's how fast things can happen in chess. Even in seemingly non-tactical positions. So black traded. Yep, and I was kind of just deciding between good options here. Even knight b3, interesting. Wow, engine likes this move. <laughs> Pivoting the knight back, maybe looking to reposition it. 
That's too funny. All the other moves. I'm looking at the top five lines. I like to get a, a broad lay of the land here. You can select up to five lines when you're running the engine on Lee Chess. Yeah, I mentioned knight takes b7, queen takes a5, bishop takes a6. Even knight a4 is up there. Interesting. Threatening knight b6 along with this. <laughs> knight b3. This is why it's worth it for you to review your games almost always, guys, because, I mean, you, should, you shouldn't be looking at the engine on every single move and just, like, you know, trying to um, download the engine's lines into your brain by rote. Like, that's not a smart way to learn, but... In critical positions in particular, especially ones where I faced uh, a dilemma in a game, I pay attention. So the fact that the engine is suggesting a move I didn't even consider whatsoever is pretty interesting to me. It's a backward knight move, which is a classic difficult move to uh, find in chess. We've talked about that many times on this channel. But I think most humans are going to play something like what I played. So bishop takes a6. It's marked as dubious, but I'm not going to lose much sleep over that. We're still plus four here. Yeah, I can see why it likes rook c1, though. I think rook c1, given that this bishop ended up coming to b5, like the prospect of playing b3, c4 later to embarrass it is pretty, pretty tempting. But these are all relatively minor concerns at this point. I took with a rook. Again, if queen takes a5, I just didn't like that black has queen f5 going after this pawn. So I took with a rook. I felt f6 wasn't the right approach, but honestly, this is a really difficult position for black. I still felt maybe queen f5 was the move. I was considering playing rook a7 against that. Tension likes queen d1. It's like taunting me with these backward moves. Queen d1. Why, though? <laughs> Why? I mean, I get the idea to play g4, but I can play g4 even without queen d1. That's a deep move. Okay, now it's saying rook a7. All right. Yeah, because one of the things I mentioned is black has to watch the queen here. So I'm attacking the pawn. If uh, queen e7, that runs into knight e7 with the fork. And if something like, uh, let's say, e6, here too, this g4 move looks like trouble. Uh, knight d 7 coming once again. So various tactical issues here. So f6 instead, rook a7, hit the pawn. Yeah, maybe rook e8 is a little more tenacious here, defending it. Would have been interesting how I would play this. I can imagine, again, maybe queen coming in. Um, maybe b3, this might be a good time to play this move, not revealing my hand yet, hinting at c4, although that still needs to be arranged. Yeah, I think I think a slower move is in order here. I would consider g4 perhaps to stop queen f5, although I think it's a little bit loosening. I probably wouldn't play it. e4 is interesting. I think I probably would play this move and bide my time. Again, if e5, just drop the bishop back. Yeah, prevent this bishop from really achieving any sort of life on that diagonal. So as played, e5. Ooh, and the engine likes this line. Let's explore that. Take, take. Sack the exchange. Take e5. I didn't see anything immediate after this. I had a feeling this is probably winning because the dark squares are absolutely toast for black. Bishop c3 preparing queen d4. To the engine, this is this is child's play, but I didn't want to take a risk in a otherwise what I thought was completely winning position. I didn't want to risk sacrificing any material. Yeah, the engine's already suggesting lines that black can just try to play to prolong the game here, giving up a, a rook to try to defend. Okay, so that's winning. But I went bishop g3. And rook f7. Likes the capture there. That looks kind of similar to the game. Okay, so if black plays in this exact position, take, 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 bishop f8. It's not so bad. Yeah, looking for an opposite color bishop position. This is kind of similar to the game, but just better because, yeah... I wonder why I didn't think about this possibility as much. It's a much better version of the game for black because when knight d7 is played, even though I have the maiden 2 threat, there's no pawn on e5 that I'm attacking. Like, these pawns are off the board. My, my pawn on e3, black's pawn on e5. So black has a lot less to worry about here. Bishop g7. 
I mean, this still looks winning for White, but I'm going to have to work a lot harder, that's for sure. Okay, so that's probably Black's only possible way of playing. Trade the Rooks, trade the Pawns, try to bail with some sort of opposite color Bishop situation, which I'm probably not going to allow anytime soon. All right, so after Bishop here, yeah, Rook A8 was my first instinct, but this seemed even easier. Take, Queen check. Yeah, I think pretty much wherever Black steps with the King, or if they block here, I'm going to take on E5. There's even even that if I want to, if Black goes to E8 to E8 with the King. Yeah, and I think this is pretty straightforward from here. Yep, just deciding between good options at this point. Pretty much any, anything sensible wins. I was expecting queen e6 here. And I thought maybe throw this check in, see if black goes this way. I can take this pawn. Uh, king h8, this would be a nice little checkmate pattern with the knight guarding g8. Something along these lines. So queen f8. Yeah, I don't think I missed a whole lot here. Black's just running out of moves. Queen e5. So if king g8 is the only move, what's the best way to finish this off? b3. I probably would have played knight f6, but you know, b3 here and then knight f6. That looks pretty nice. Because if black steps here or here, they're stepping into discoveries. Um, I can win the queen or at minimum force a trade with more, more uh, further win of material. Yeah, and if this, take here, win another pawn, attack continues, or take here. That's a nice one as well, because if take, check, pick up the bishop, I'm up a bajillion pawns, up uh, four pawns when all is said and done. But I'm glad I found queen f4, because I, I really felt like this bishop deserved to be one, being loose and just kind of the culmination of this. Yeah, just win the game from here. You know, if you're in really severe time pressure, and you want to try to simplify things as much as possible, I wouldn't even necessarily fault someone, again, in a certain situation, in playing a move like this, just to force the queens off the board, even at the expense of losing a, uh, a full piece, but just getting down to a two-pawn up endgame if they think it's going to make it easier for them to win. But uh, wouldn't recommend doing that necessarily. Oh, I had queen f4. <laughs> That's an easy queen trade, queen f4. Okay, I didn't see that. In the moment, but we won the game from here. Just always watch for stalemates. Eric Rosen, I know you're out there. <laughs> I actually played Eric and Bullet recently, and I was paranoid of a stalemate at the end of the game. I ended up winning, but I was making a explicit point to like double, triple check where he can go with his king. All right, so thank you to my kind opponent here. I don't know this player whatsoever, but I hope to see you in the YouTube comments. Hope you guys picked up some useful stuff from the standard video. Again, it's been a while. It feels really good to be in uh, you know, the commentary, commentary chair, so to speak. Let me know what you guys think about this. If you play the Jobava London, anything you want to know about it. And thanks, as always, for watching, guys. I'll see you guys again soon.